Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Charlian Forum. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to be continuing my series talking about the roles in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, where I'm going to talk about casters today. So I did a video previously talking about melees and all the balance in that role. Uh, I'll put a card up in the top right of this video uh, where you can see that if you'd like to go check it out. I've also done an impression on a couple of jobs, and one of the jobs, Summoner, uh, that I'm going to talk about today is included uh, in that list. So if you wanted to check that out, I'll uh, link the playlist and uh, put a card right now for that. Um, so let's talk about casters overall in 14 and where I think they're at. Um, so I've, I've finished leveling uh, all my casters recently. I just finished the last one, I think yesterday. Um, so I think that the role overall is in a pretty good spot. Um, I think that it's relatively balanced. There's one big outlier, um, and you know what that is if you play, uh, but I think that the other three are balanced pretty well. Um, but there's definitely some things that uh, are left to be desired uh, in both directions. I think that some things can be stronger and some things could be a little weaker. Um, so we're going to talk about that today, and uh, let's just get started with Pictomancer because we're already on it. All right, so here we are with Pictomancer. Uh, just like my melee uh, jobs video, I have some notes that I'm going to put up in the corner here so that everybody can see what I'm looking at and what I've written. Um, I just sort of wrote these notes either as I was leveling the jobs or just as I was playing them more. Um, so starting off with Pictomancer, uh, Pictomancer is by far and away the strongest caster in the group. Uh, it is... No holds bar, the best job uh, in the in the group right now, possibly even the strongest job in the game. Um, there's some discussion there, but I don't think there's a lot of discussion. I think the Pictomancer is pretty busted. Um, as far as pure damage output, at least the last time I checked, it was the top DPS in the game. Um, so benefits of Pictomancer right off the bat. Uh, number one, very high damage. <laughs> it does insane damage. Um, it's a pretty fun job to play. It has a lot going for it just in terms of enjoyment and uh, the, the freedom that it gives you um, is something that I think other jobs need to strive for. Um, you know, you have a pretty basic rotation as far as your, your regular casting goes. You, know, you have your RGBW combo and then you have your CYMK combo that happens when you switch with subtractive palette. You also have your motifs. Um, so you have your palm motif your weapon motif and your star sky motif. Now these cast instantly when you're outside of combat, but when you are in combat, they do have a cast time of three seconds each. Um, but you can cast these kind of whenever. Um, you can render them kind of whenever. You know, your star muse is your two minute cooldown. So that one you obviously want to do on cooldown or at least as close as you can. Um, but these don't expire, these motifs. So you can pre-paint these and then you can just sit on them for as long as you want. Uh, you know, Palm Muse and uh, Striking Muse, or your, your Creature Muse, I guess I should say, because this changes, and your Hammer Muse. Um, you know, this is just an instant cast. Just let it off. And then Striking Muse, you get 30 seconds to use these uh, three Hammer attacks. And they are all ranged, and they are all instant, which means that you can use them while moving, um, which is a huge bonus for Pictomancer because it is extremely mobile. Um, its cast times are pretty short, um, they're short enough that you can pretty easily weave in, um, one of your, your creature muses here. Um, that's a super easy weave that anybody can hit. Um, you have your holy and white and your comet and black, which are both instant cast and have free movement. You have your mog of the ages and that also switches to Medine. That's another instant rainbow drip. This has a cast time, but it can be made instant. Um, through the use of your scenic muse buff, which also increases your cast time. Um, so this is like ley lines on crack because it also buffs your team. Uh, so this can be made instant and also star prism, which is a big damage and heals your allies. Um, you have your personal shield that you can recast and spread to the team for a team shield. And you have smudge, which is a on avant style dash and a sprint at the end um it, it, the kit on picto is just like so loaded it's so intense it's got everything you could ever need um and as a result it's super fun to play 
um, it's really flexible. You have a lot of options for when you do things and what order you do them in. It's pretty ad hoc. Um, you know, you can kind of just, as long as you're setting up for your two minute window under Starry Muse, then you can kind of just do stuff whenever you feel like it. Um, you know, you can cast that you can paint whenever you need to paint you can render whenever you need to render you can use those whenever you need to use them you know you just dump your your holies and your comets to make sure that you're not capping on resource you dump your subtractive to make sure you're not capping on your resource and uh it's pretty free form um it, it's a pretty loose rotation it's more of a priority system where you're trying to fit certain things in certain places but it's not like a hard set like you need to do this one minute and 10 seconds into the fight or you're going to be misaligned, um, which is really interesting and really fun. I think that this free flowing sort of uh, rotation where things are sort of more priority based is a goal that more jobs should strive to meet. I think that the style of Pictomancer, the way that it's built is extremely good. Um, it feels incredible to play just because it is so open. Um, however, negatives. Uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming at a glance. Um, in particular, your buff. Um, Starry Muse is like, I'm pretty sure this is the longest tooltip in the game. I'm almost positive. It's, it's too much, man. It's too much text. Um, and, you know, it, it, the way that all these things fit together can be a little bit confusing. It's not a super intuitive job. Um, but once you learn it and you understand it, it's pretty simple to grasp once you've wrapped your head around the basics, right? Um, the other big complaint I see is some people really don't like the, the visual effects or the sound effects. Um, the like paint swashing, I guess is what I would describe, that sound and then like the, the swashing of the paint, uh, that's sort of like a wet sound. Um, some people really don't like that. Some people really don't like how like animated it is. Like the effects are sort of a more stylized, almost sort of cell shaded type, um, graphical style, um, which isn't for everybody. You know, I get that. Um, I didn't love it when I first saw it. I remember when they did the reveal, I was like, oh my goodness, that's going to look terrible. But I've kind of come around. Um, I think it's fun and it's really colorful and it's, it's exciting. Um, it's something that final fantasy didn't have before. And I think that it fits. Um, so that's not really a big criticism for me. Um, but maybe you really hate it and that's okay. I mean, I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. Um, biggest issue I think is that Pictomancer needs a nerf. It's, <laughs> it's just too powerful. It, it does too much damage for how much utility it brings um, and how much like group posturing it's able to achieve. Uh, I think it's just too strong. Um, I, this is one of the rare occasions in the 10, 11 years I've played this game where I look at a job and I'm like, that job needs a nerf. Um, I don't know that I've ever said that before, actually. Um, I've never, like, complained about being too powerful. But Pictomancer is so strong that it makes the other casters in the role feel obsolete because it just does everything that they do but better, um, which is not a very good feeling. Uh, it, it just feels a little janky to know that, like, I could be playing Pictomancer right now, but instead I'm playing Red Mage, you know, um, not the end of the world. You know, the other jobs could be buffed commensurately to sort of bring them up to the level that Pictomancer is at right now. Um, but even then, I think that it would have to, they'd have to be pretty big buffs uh, because the amount of utility that Picto brings is just like stomping the rest of the jobs in the role. Um, it's not even close. I mean, the only thing that it doesn't have is a res. Um, but, you know, this late into the tier, you know, a res is really only useful like in casual content or early in the tier when people are still unfamiliar with fights and the expectation is that there's going to be deaths. Um, this late into the tier, uh, people aren't really progging anymore. You know, it's, it's mostly clears at this point. 
Um, you know, that'll obviously change in 7.1 when the ultimate comes out. Red mages will see a huge uptick in, in, in power there because you'll have the res. Um, but right now, <clears throat> I think that not having the res is not a justification for how much stronger this is. Um, so that needs some changes. There just needs to be some balance changes. Um, that's stuff that I'm sure will come in 7.1. I'm positive. Uh, either this is going to get nerfed or there's going to be a bunch of buffs. Um, so we shall see. But we will jump to our next caster on the list, which is going to be Red Mage. All right, and here we are with Red Mage. Um, so off the top, Red Mage is my personal preferred caster. Uh, if I'm going to be playing caster, I'm probably going to be playing Red Mage. Um, followed probably closely by Picto right now. Uh, but Red Mage is definitely my preference. Um, something about it I just really enjoy. Um, so let's just jump right into the pros and cons here. So first off, dual cast uh, as the inherent ability that gives you um, the ability to cast every other spell is an instant cast. Um, so as long as you do something with a cast time, your next spell will be instant. Uh, this, I think, is still overall the strongest movement tool that the caster role has. Um, just being able to move on every other cast is huge, especially since Red Mage's cast times are not very long. Um, the only cast times that are over two seconds are Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow, which you should never be like hard casting except for in like a pre pull. Um, so, you know, it's not really a big deal. So basically, every two seconds, you get a uh, swift cast, which is nuts. Um, and then you also actually have swift cast for the times when you need it. Um, you also have acceleration, uh, which is something that's really nice. It gives you a free instant cast of Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder, and it is guaranteed to proc Ver Stone or Ver Fire. It also now gives you Grand Impact, which is an instant cast skill. So if you have a dual cast stack up, you use acceleration, then you get three instant casts back to back to back because you will get... Um, You'll have your dual cast, you'll have your free acceleration, and you'll have your grand impact. So you get one, two, and three instant casts just for hitting one button, um, which is very cool, very strong. Um, Red Mage, obviously very stylish. It has the uh, melee combo. You dash in, you use your melee combo, jump out. And you can use your bevy of finishers, um, which is definitely something worth talking about. Um, but we'll get to that in the cons section. Um, you know, I think the, the last like big positive of Red Mage is that it just has like a ton of utility. You know, you have Verkir, which is like the only actually good cure on a DPS job. Um, that, at least that you can use on other people, of course, not counting Second Wind, which got the big buff, and that's not very good. Um, you have Magic Barrier, which is a 10% uh, mitt with a 5% healing increase, so it's like Mantra built into a shield, which is crazy. Embolden, obviously, is a party-wide damage buff, but most importantly, you have Verraze, um, which is probably the strongest like group progression utility in the game, in my opinion. Um, when it comes to progressing new fights, Red Mage is indispensable. It is so powerful because you can chain res three people before you run out of mana, um, which is just like crazy. It's so strong. Um, a lot of times people will progress a new fight, a new ultimate or a new savage fight on Red Mage. And then once they understand the fight and they know, you know, people aren't going to be dying quite as much they will switch to like Pictomancer or Black Mage or something that does a little bit more damage. Um, but a lot of casters will prog a fight on Red Mage just because it is so useful to have those Razzes um, to make sure that your party sees mechanics, right, when you're learning. Um, so really powerful, but uh, not without fault. Uh, I think that it does have an overabundance of finishers. It, it relies on that playstyle a little bit too much for my taste. Um the playstyle of procs, where you're sort of fishing for these uh, Verstone and Verfire procs in between your arrow and thunders, that might not be for everybody, and I get that. Um, I don't mind it. 
but I know that a lot of people don't like that. They rather have like a static uh, thing where the, the, the skill does not come from luck. It just comes from knowing what order to press things in. Right. Um, acceleration kind of manages that, uh, because it does guarantee that this will proc, uh, the next time you cast it. Um, however, I think that acceleration primarily exists as a movement tool, um, you know, I don't love the idea of using it just to justify uh, or, or using it just to fish for those procs. Um, I think that it's not a very good reason to use it. Um, it's much stronger as a movement tool. And, you know, it just it kind of is what it is. If you don't like procs, that might be a deal breaker for you. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, and again, the damage difference between Red Mage and Pictomancer I'm not sure the the raise justifies it, um, considering how much better everything the Pictomancer does uh, than Red Mage. You know, uh, Red Mage has a shield, but Pictomancer's shield is stronger. Um, Red Mage has a damage buff for the party, but Pictomancer's damage buff is stronger. Um, you know, you've got 10%, 5%. And then if we look at Picto, 5% on Starry Muse. Plus, it grants all of these bonuses for yourself, and it gives you access to Star Prism, which is a party-wide heal. Um, so by default, slightly stronger. Um, and then you've got Tempura Coat, which you can spread to all party members uh, for 10%. So you not only get the personal shield, you can then spread it for the party shield. Um, so having that utility to shield yourself and everybody else at the same time with just one button press is pretty strong. Um, it doesn't have the same, uh, you know, HP absorb uh, HP restored buff that uh, Magic Barrier does, but I think that that's like a pretty meager thing. Um, being able to shield yourself for twenty percent and then spread a ten percent barrier on top of that is uh, pretty nuts so it's it's just a slightly better version just like uh you know you get a slightly better version of embolden here um so it's 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 a little bit tricky um the raise i don't know is enough to justify the difference but red mage is very mobile uh and like i said very flashy very fun and it's definitely my preferred caster um so We'll jump to the next one on the list, which is Black Mage. All right, Black Mage, the uh, traditional big fire and ice caster. Uh, definitely still very powerful in Dawn Trail. However, um, maybe not f as powerful as people would have liked. And uh, some changes that were made might not have been in the best interest of everybody who likes the job. So let's just dive right in. Um, First up, the pros. Uh, Black Mage still feels super good to play to me. Um, the visual effects and the sound effects of its casts are still top notch. Um, the feeling of just like getting to throw down ley lines and stand there and just blast fire fours out. Oof, man, that does that feel good to just be able to chain cast fire fours. Um, you know, Paradox is a really cool button. I like the, the animation. It's a very fun. And uh, I love Despair. You know, finishing with Despair and Flare Star, I think, feels really fun. Um, thunder and, and High Thunder, the, the changes there. Um, I like them. Sorry. You know, I, I know that, like, I... I I get where they're coming from and I'll talk about it in the con section. So I'll just say that I think that black mage still feels very strong. It feels really fun to play. Um, and it has a very high level of optimization that's possible. This might be a take, but I think that black mage has the highest skill floor of any job in the game. I think that the base knowledge that's required to play black mage optimally makes it, just more challenging than any other job. 
um, at least again, to play optimally, um, to know where to stand before you have to be there to predict these mechanics and understand where the safe spots are before they come out so that you can be casting and standing there already. Um, it, it requires a certain amount of knowledge of the fight and of the job that other jobs do not demand. Um, so if your thing is looking smart <laughs> and doing big damage while you're doing it, uh, black mage might be the job for you. Um, so, you know, on to negatives, the play style might not be for everybody. You know, that knowledge base, that requirement, the long cast times might not be everybody's favorite. Um, again, some of the changes in Dawn Trail have been extremely controversial. Um, you know, the changes with the MP regeneration with Blizzard, um, where now instead of it being a passive thing, you have to actually cast a spell it means that there's an extra GCD inserted into the kit, um, that's required to press. Whereas before you could like Blizzard three and then kind of hit all your procs, you know, you could use your Xenos, you could use your thunder. And by the time you did all that, your MP was back up. You could switch back into fire and start casting again. Um, so that change sort of killed any sort of non-standard play. It forces you to cast Blizzard four in there to get your mana back. Um, it's not for everybody. And like, I don't, I don't play enough black mage really to like have a super strong opinion about it. I know that flare star is a little bit contentious, uh, because from what I understand, again, I'm just reading stuff. Um, the, the cast time on flare star is allegedly a problem. Some people are saying that they'd prefer if you could use it with any number of stacks and it got just stronger, the more stacks you had, um, or if it was instant, either one of those would kind of help solve the problem. Um, I don't know. You know, like I said, I'm not a black mage player. I'm not really a hundred percent sure. So the biggest issue though, is that black mage has no utility, right? No party utility. It's only utility is big damage. It's basically like samurai, but the caster version. Um, and the issue there is that Pictomancer does more damage than black mage. In most cases, in most cases, there are definitely people out there who play Black Mage that can just nuke everything off the face of the planet because they know exactly what to do um, in every fight and they are just very skilled and they know this job like the back of their hand and they can just do the fight without ever being, without ever having to move really unless they need to, you know. Um, and those people can still pump hard on Black Mage, stupid numbers. Um, however, for, you know, the 98th percentile and down, um, you're looking at a job that has to work a lot harder than Pictomancer, is less mobile than Pictomancer, has longer cast times than Pictomancer, brings less party buffs to the table than Pictomancer, and does less damage than Pictomancer. Um, so why would you play it, you know? Um, so I think Black Mage just needs like a big buff, big, big, big buff. Um, just get those numbers way, way, way up. Um, because in order to justify black mage being in a party, it needs to do more damage than Picto. Otherwise, why would I play it? Right. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm at with black mage. I predict that it will get a buff in 7.1 or Pictomancer will get a nerf. Either one of them would essentially be a buff for black mage. Um, and so with that, we'll talk about summoner. Um, I'm not going to change dungeons. I don't really care about the glam for summoner. So we'll just sort of talk about it now while we're here. Um, I did a longer video on Summoner where I sort of talked about why I'm not a huge fan of the job right now. I'll put a card for that up in the top right. Um, but it all sort of boils down to the fact that Summoner is very easy to play, which is great. Um, it's very approachable, which is good. We need that for players who either aren't interested in optimization or, you know, need to focus on mechanics. They, they can need to focus on one thing at a time. Um, but, you know, it's a hard sell when other jobs in the game are so much more engaging and interesting, and this one is fairly boring. Um, Solar Bahamut is not what people were expecting. Uh, it, it's a strange addition. I'm not going to say it's bad because it's not bad, but it's a strange addition. Um, you know, people were expecting a new round of Eggies, you know, Garuda or, uh, like, uh, Shiva, Leviathan and Rama or, or something. Um, and it's just a weird direction that they took Summoner in by just adding another Demi and then basically doing nothing else. Um, it, it, it's, 
just a weird choice. I'm not sure why they did it, but they did. Um, you know, summoner has a good identity. The identity of summoning is alive and well here, but it's just kind of boring. Um, it plays more like a fizz ranged than it does a caster, which I think is a big issue. And, um, you know, I just, I would like to see some changes to the job. I'd like to see something happen with it. Um, just some more intrigue, just a little bit more challenge. It doesn't necessarily need to be difficult. Like I said, I think it's good that there's an easy job in the game, but just something to make it a little bit more exciting to play. It, you can have a job that's intriguing to play and simple to play at the same time. You know, they're not mutually exclusive is what I'm trying to say. Um, you can have a job that's simple, but still exciting. Um, so yeah, you know, that's where I'm at. I, I think that the caster role as a whole is pretty good. I think that Picto is just a little bit too strong. <laughs> Uh, it probably needs to be nerfed a little bit, um, but everything else feels pretty good. I think that Red Mage and Summoner are on like a pretty even playing field, um, which is good because they're the casters that have the reses, you know, that the res casters. So the fact that they're pretty balanced is good. Um, Black Mage needs to be doing more damage. Pictomancer needs to be doing a little bit less damage. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with casters and, uh, that's pretty much what I have to say. If you're a caster main, um, sound off. Tell me why I'm right. Tell me why I'm wrong. Um, this is certainly not the role I play the most. Um, I mostly play melee um, and some tanking. But, uh, you know, I play it from time to time, usually on Red Mage, though. That's sort of my preference, like I said. Um, I'll probably do either Fizz Ranged or Tank next. And then whichever one I don't do, I'll do after. Healers will probably close it out. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, let me know what you guys think. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm right. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.